The future scares me, but it also gives me hope. Only if I can glimpse into the future, I may be able to save humanity. I am an actuary, an oracle based on science. Climate change is an existential threat to humanity. There are many global collective efforts to address the impact of climate change, such as the United Nations Sustainable Development Growth, or SDG. Country authorities are implementing TCFD standards to address the climate change issues. From actuarial science perspective, how does TCFD work and how can we contribute? This is the TCFD approach. They focus on the financial sustainability of corporates. They introduce a concept called transition risk, which quantifies the financial impact of climate change. In essence, it is about earnings volatility and solvency, which is our focus. This is an illustration of transition risk. A corporate draws revenue from various countries, incurring costs in other countries. The impact of such events on revenue and cost exposes a country to solvency risk. From actuarial science perspective, all this refers to the loss distribution. Loss distribution helps us to estimate capital adequacy at a certain confidence interval. Many banks adopted 99.96% confidence interval. The remaining expected shortfall is the risk of insolvency that we need to accept, commonly known as the tail probability. The first component of capital adequacy is expected loss, which is included in business budgeting and is reflected in risk-based pricing for products. An example in Basel II and Basel III for credit portfolio is that EL equals to PD times LGD times EAD. In general, it relates to the earnings volatility of a company. Solvency is addressed by budgeting for economic capital, which measures the unconditional, unexpected loss. One approach is stress testing, which focuses on conditional expected loss in reference to scenarios selected through scenario analysis. This is well documented by UK banking regulators in the Climate Financial Risk Forum. Insolvency due to climate change is not imagination. It has already happened. This is an example of stress testing on earnings volatility. This is the earnings distribution without stress and under stress. The skewness and ketosis under stress changes the characteristics of earnings volatility. From actuarial science perspective, all these initiatives boils down to the loss distribution that we need to manage. There are four main areas in prediction analytics, namely prediction methodology, software and tools, data, and functional role. Advancements in technology such as AI in Industrial Revolution 4.0 will replace or obsolete some skill sets, and there will be demand for new skill sets. Actuaries need to embrace these changes to upgrade and reposition ourselves to stay relevant in Industrial Revolution 5.0. There are two main predictive methodologies. In analytical prediction modeling approach, we have preconceived logic for the prediction, and we try to simplify the world to fit into the limitations of the model. Take time series prediction for example. It evolves from autoregression as a base model to ARMA, ARIMA, SARIMA, and SARIMAX, which are all based on the same idea that past values of a time series can alone be used to predict future values. In deep learning models, it is a different approach. It is a generic learning algorithm that does not require prior knowledge. It learns and builds a model based on its given data. Like how a baby learns using flip cards, the AI makes a guess and the flip cards verify whether the guess is correct or not. The error of the guess is fed through the utility function through backward propagation to adjust the weights of the AI brain, allowing it to learn from its mistakes and improve its guess. This is a schematic design for a neural network. Each connection here carries a weight. This is a neural network I implemented using Python and TensorFlow some time back. It is more than 100,000 degrees of freedom to build a predictive model for very complex, non-linear systems. The transfer learning capabilities of AI allows it to store knowledge gained from solving one problem and apply it to a different but related problem. It allows intelligence to evolve faster. In terms of software and tools, the common ones are R with RStudio and Python with Anaconda and Jupyter Notebook. With advancements in Industrial Revolution 4.0, Coding will become an unnecessary obstacle to making predictions. In the near future, making predictions does not require coding. These are examples of no-code prediction. We give AI instructions in human language, and AI makes predictions. In this example, AI predicts aging through extrapolation on Mona Lisa playing tennis when she is 50 years old. 
AI can also predict non-existent scenarios, such as the last person taking a selfie at the end of the world. AI can also make predictions using transfer learning, in painting a cat and dog, in Van Gogh and Picasso's painting styles. In Industrial Revolution 5.0, AI will take over prediction with its superior computing power. We only need to define the prediction problem statement without compromising due to the limitations of the prediction methodology. The basic assumption in predictive models is that history tends to repeat itself in the near future. In building predictive models, we train the model using historical data, we validate the model using out-of-sample data, and we backtest the model regularly. What if we want to predict events that have no historical data? In Industrial Revolution 4.0, Generative AI is the solution. Generative Adversarial Network, or GAN, is capable of generating random human faces. These people look real, but they actually do not exist. GAN can be applied in climate change scenario generation and analysis. With technological advancements in Industrial Revolution 4.0, some skill sets will be replaced or obsoleted, and there will be demand for new skill sets. The role of actuaries will change, and we need to stay relevant and coexist with AI in Industrial Revolution 5.0. AI is not a legal entity. We need to take accountability in adopting AI recommendations. To guide AI towards supporting humanity, we need to define and formulate problem statements. Our position is to become controllers, to understand, supervise, and challenge the basis of AI recommendations. With the supreme power of AI, we need to ensure ethical use of AI.